Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. You're always the Restless Kaiser, and I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling for Martin. Right then. It's a long way to Tipperary. To, 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 to Brook. To Brook, mate. That's what we got here. So, uh, do you want to tell them what's in the box? Now, I will start the opening. So, it tells me here you get all the things. Okay, this box contains two forces and everything you need to start playing Flames of War. Beautiful. Uh, right. You get a thing and a thing, then you get a complete A5 rulebook. Quick start guide, 12 unit cards, and 8 million... What? One times 8 million 8 bayonets? 8 million dies. bayonets dies. What's that all about? Okay. I've got one open, but tell them what it says in the back. What do you get in this box? Okay, so you get a British force, which mm -hmm. I will tell you first. Which is three Crusader tanks. Uh, a tank platoon of three Crusader tanks. That first one was a HQ, gents, didn't you know? Yeah. Uh, you get another tank platoon. This time it is three Grant tanks. And then you get another tank platoon of three M4 Sherman. So that's the British forces. You also get an Italian force. You do. Which consists of one M14-41 tank, a tank platoon full of those M14-41 tanks. Then you get an assault gun battery, which is five Somventi assault guns, which is cool. It is, and it is. then you also get two 88s. Just in case. case. Just in case. Well, That's a lot of stuff. I'm, I've nearly finished sorting out. So, uh, you've got all the things. I've got all the things. Oh, 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 before I put it away, because I forgot to say this is a starter army. Oh. It retails for 42 or 44 pounds, one or the other. Yeah, mate. But also, you get your tokens on the outside of the box. So you can play. So you can play straight out of the box. In the really I mean, you really only need the sort of pin down markers. Yeah. Anyway, it's not it's not a big deal. The fact they included it. You get the usual bit of paperwork, which is you get your destruction sheet. Sweet. Um, and they have online guides as to how to build these, like including a video. They've got um, a step-by-step, -step, like a blog one. Okay. And they've also yeah. got videos of a lot of these. So it tells you how to make them and the different variants. That is handy. Often these sprues will make more mm -hmm. variants than you get instructions for because right. it's giving you instructions to build the ones for this set. For example, the Grant Sprue will build a Grant or a Lee. They are different, but it doesn't tell you how to build a Lee. Ew. Okay. So you don't make one by mistake because the British don't use them. You get your little core rules pull out thing, Oosh. get you started, and you get your rules set in a little baggie. That's most of the paper. So do you want to pick a sprue? Perfect. And I'll... Yeah, read out. Yeah, I've, we'll I've grabbed, I grabbed I grabbed three. Card. I leant over and grabbed three. Now, can we start with the Crusader? Because that's actually the headquarters. Yes. Is yes, that all right? We that can. makes sense to start there. Which is this green one do, do, here. Do, do. True fact. BM078. It's a 2017 kit. And it comes in this lovely lime green. Beautiful. So the Crusader Armour Squadron is the formation it's telling you to build out of this box yeah. for the British. Um, so it's got one Crusader Armoured Squadron HQ and two to five Crusader Armoured Troops. Sweet. Now, the HQ has either two or three tanks in it. Uh, uh, sorry, three or four tanks. The question is how many Crusader 2s you have. It's going to be two Crusader 2s, which is a two-pounder, right. and two Crusader CS, which is the three-inch, or... Still two Crusader CS, but only one Crusader two pounder. This is important because you have six Crusaders. They build many yes. variants, but you need to build an exact combination, which is two of the close support tanks. And then when we look at the Crusader two and three, when you come to build those, you can only build up to two with the six pounder. All oh, right, so just pay attention to so what you're building. Just pay a little bit of attention to what you're building because you can't, Use um, all the variant versions. Certain, right. Yeah. And if you you want to build this as a legal formation, you need that headquarters component has got only two, only ever two, exactly two, <laughs> with the howitzer. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that's the Crusader. Uh, shall we have a have a quick look at the sprue? Yeah, man. You um, so you've got six okay. of these. Yes. You're gonna build I would build, by the way, two with the howitzer. Two with the two pounder and two with the six pounder because that's the best combination that's legal within the cards that they've given you. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so two, two with two pounder, two with six pounder, two with five. All right, so. 2017 Crusaders, kit. 2017. This was an original um, mid war. When they re released, well, when they released version four of Flames of War, mm. they actually started in the mid war. So almost oh. all of this desert stuff. It's been around that. from that. Yeah. They're, now they dabbled in plastic in version three, but towards the end of it. But when they hit version four, it's like they redid a lot of their army lists and took a lot of the obscure vehicles out that are only available in resin and metal and things like that. And it's like the Go main on. forces are gonna be in plastic. Sweet. From here on in. That's a good decision. Um, from, from a modelling perspective. So for people who are getting into it now, it's a very good perspective. But for those that have had but the for collection. for those that already had a collection, they'd already painted their way through all that resin well. metal. And they're like, That's not good. Where, where's, yeah, where's the rules for this gone? You know, mm. there was there was some graphic. I mean, people have mostly got over it. And a lot of that resin and metal stuff is still available. Okay. Uh, but obviously, a modern injection molded plastic kit is what the new player wants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's the strongest thing. I mean, you can't. You can't see, but there's, what did it say on the front, on, on this box? 22 vehicles and two guns. It said lots and lots of things yeah. in sprue form. T t that's, that's less than two pound a vehicle. That's now, it's a, in a platoon cheap. box, this box, this whole box costs 42 quid, maybe right. 44. I can't remember. You know, you got the numbers it's messed there, in the head. Somewhere. I don't know which of the two it is. Five Crusaders alone in a platoon box is 35 quid. All of Joking. this. No, no, that's how much a platoon box is. Well, then this is an Insta buy, right? <laughs> right. If you want Crusaders, the rest of it is essentially well, free. I mean, yeah. Sweet. Um, so the Crusader is is um, it's not a late war. It's a late early war tank. A late early war. Does tank. that does that make sense? Does that a make late sense? Early war tank. So it's the it's the last of the cruiser tanks. Okay. That we used in the desert, and it's the last of the kind of two pounder armed tanks right. after this we largely moved to american tanks and then to the cromwell Sweet. as the next yeah that's the next the next up. major british tank this is the last time you're going to see british tank formations fundamentally equipped with british tanks mm. is in is in the desert so um it's an iteration from a9 a10 etc i think it might be a12 but don't don't quote don't me on quote. That. all of these british tanks have got names and a numbers <laughs> and I'm not enough of an early war rivet counter to do that. Um, but yeah, th this so this saw widespread use in the desert. Um, but in terms of stats, it's interesting that they've chosen to put these up against the Italians because, of course, Britain was doing really well against Italy. Right, yeah. Um, in fact, what's happened in 1940 um, and, and is before Rommel gets there, we have surrounded a massive Italian army in Saronica with a massively smaller force, but it was fully motorized. And it was cruiser, cruiser tanks and Rolls Royce armored cars from the First World War. Wow. You know, uh, had completely outflanked them, caught them in that bulge of Saronica, and, and, and they'd surrendered en masse. But then, because Churchill likes to put his fingers in all the pies, all of them, instead of carrying on to um, conquer Libya, we redeployed to Greece. Why? Because the Greeks were getting hammered. Right, okay, fair enough. So we, we so that a large portion of the African army, victorious African army gets shipped to Greece where they lose to the Nazis, mm. they then fall back to Crete where they lose again, and then they're oh, back in Alexandria and it's just like, the dominoes we, could, we would have been in Tripoli, or not for this, by which point Hitler has decided to send three divisions to North Africa. Back to square one, right? Not only back to square one, it's like suddenly, Crusader and British cruiser tanks versus Panzer threes and fours. Not don't look the good. Mustard. No, against these Italian ramshackle tanks that we're going to have a look at later. Yeah, sweet mate. Stay does, the, does the job. Largely because of the two pounder gun. So stat wise, your Crusader has got front armor of three. Loads, mate. Loads. <laughs> three. You get dice as well as that, right? Yeah. And the two pounder gun has got an anti tank power of seven. When you see the Italian stats for the for the Italian light tank, that's uh, adequate, right? It's it's adequate. It's doing the job. Obviously, the six pounder is better. We had I've said this before. We had loads of two pounders because the six pounder wasn't really ready after the retreat from Dunkirk. And it was like, well, we've got nothing. Well, we've got we got need these. something now. Yeah. It was like, well, we can produce a lot of these now. 
and just hold on for and that just wait for the yeah, yeah exactly um, so gradually these these will get up gone to the six pounder but I think the two pounder is maybe 37 mil whereas the six pounder is 57 and a high velocity 57 yeah so yeah that's yeah your crusader and the points reflect it you're getting three tanks in your crusader troop for five six or seven points depending on how many of these six pounder tanks you know so in a hundred point game of crusaders swarm <laughs> a lot of crusaders yeah absolutely and um, you do have the option in the HQ, and say, was to switch out one of these Crusader platoons for the Grants. Built these, mm. showing you a picture of one. They're 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 nice. I like it. It's what a tank should look like. I I love I like it's the design sleek. of it. It is sleek. It looks more modern than yeah. it was. Yeah. I like the turret design. I don't know the, how good it was. The, yeah. the, 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 it's elbow room. Is that what it was for? Elbow room. Uh, apparently, yeah. And that's what, I, I don't know whether that's where the phrase comes from. Yeah. But they, but they talk about elbow room in the turret, yeah. Genius. And it's still got that... It looks very much like a... What was the later War one? The Cromwell. The Cromwell it feels a lot like a, lot a development of, from Crusader. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. see the, the main chassis very familiar. looks very And of course they use these, these um, holes later on in the war for the uh, things like the AA tanks. Sweet. Yeah, which you've got a pair of in your army, haven't you? Oh, yeah. All right, that's that's the Crusader cool. and the Crusader Armour Squadron HQ. Oosh. Next up, you did mention the Grant slash Lee then. Mm. Can we have a look at that bad boy? What is this I've got? This that's, that's an Italian one. Can, I, can I have... But that's a one side yeah. for the moment. Can I have right, one there's the Grant. Thank you. Yeah, so you get three of these in here. What a lovely colour. Sprue. Yeah, so at different points they've, they've done um, for different releases. So the sh in this one, the Sherman and the Grant, which oh, yeah. are American tanks, are in this very, very bright desert yellow coloured plastic. Yeah. Uh, whereas I think this this Crusader collar is from the more modern builds. There's an upgrade sprue that comes with this in the late war to use it for the self-propelled AA, which oh, is right. why it's in that different coloured plastic. Yeah. Right. Because um, each of the ranges is in a is usually in a collar. Yeah. They're the same models though. Right? Yeah, it's the same stuff. So the Grant, this was one of the first American imports on a large scale. I mean, before the Honey was a bit earlier. In large numbers but this was the beginning of the like okay panzer threes and fours are no longer looking like the new hotness okay these things are built to much much higher standards this is so, a fighting tank right there's a this is a fighting tank yeah suddenly we've got we've got a tank that can go toe to toe with them but the points do reflect it a couple of things about the grant it's got a front armor of five rather than three which is a big difference when the other guy's got anti-tank numbers of seven and eight. Yeah. Yeah. Even even up to ten. You know, this this yeah, thing's got this thing's in got the game. In though, the game. Yeah. This thing is pierced by most mid-war tanks, like without rolling the dice. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly decent anti-tank guns. Um so front armor five, it's also careful. So this is reflecting a, num a number of things, right? So British cruiser tank doctrine was still a cavalry tank doctrine. They so were they were fire. grouped up, right? And it, it run brigaded the together very large numbers of tanks, blitz across the desert, and, and shoot on the move. They were trained to do this, but that doesn't mean it worked. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean it's a good system. <laughs> it yeah, was well not done. a good system. You can do it. No. So your cruiser tanks are suffer from that aggressive they hit on threes. The price does reflect it. Your grants part of a part of a having learned a lot about that. This is a Montgomery era tank. Whereas this is around earlier, right? Montgomery said um, at, the, at, uh, at El Alamein is we're not we're not going to get sucked in. So the German tank tactic in the desert it wasn't to fight tanks with tanks. It was to bait our tanks to follow Charge! them. They would fall back onto their own gun line and their anti tank guns. Would Just hammer out. us. Oh yeah. my, yeah. And That's hand time after time. How long did it take us? Before we learned that, that's a really bad so idea. So in 1942, we were like, okay, we're not going to do this yeah. anymore. Wow. But that's that's one of Mon Mon Monty's big things. But th this is part of that new initiative. We're not going to fight recklessly. Mm. We need to be careful. We need to be methodical. Money gets loads of criticisms in the late war for being plodding, for being yeah, overly preparing. Big, yeah. It's like you need, you know, you need. You look at commanders like Patton. It's like this man is aggressive. Go. But, yeah, he's aggressive when the German army has been largely beaten, and it's the right strategy. Mm. This guy fought them earlier on when they were the bee's knees, yeah. and learned not to be aggressive and not to be reckless, and indeed got his fingers burnt late war with Market Garden. Of course. Literally. Ow. 
Oh. So what the grant brings you is that big whole mounted gun. Yes. Yeah, Anti tank very... power of nine. Very very solid what gun. What flavour gun is it? It's a seventy five mil um, gun in the hull. Ooh. So there are there are rules in relation to that. There are limitations. It's because it's hull mounted. It's got the forward firing rule. Okay. Like yeah, a self propelled gun. Yeah. But actually, that that's barely limited. You've got like 180 it's like in, degrees in to the game, front. It's, it's 180, yeah. Yeah, it, it's very, very generous. Um, now, the top gun on this has a secondary weapon rule. And essentially what that means, you fire the main gun at whatever you want. After that, you can fire the 37mm gun, but you only shoot once and you add one to the target number. Okay. If for whatever reason you couldn't fire your main gun, you could still fire the top gun on its profile. Fair if dude. you fire them both, you get this, this extra shot. And you need to remember that this is early war, so that top gun has got an anti-tank rating of 7. Whoa. It's not nothing. That is the not nothing. The 7mm gun is still, well, it's it's as good as the 2-pounder. Yep. Wow. Okay. In the game. But you, but you pay that in the points, because these cost... Come as three for 18 points. Opposed now, in mind, to... three Crusaders you could get for as little as five. Yeah, it's different. It's a very, <laughs> very different. In terms of the model, the nice features are sculpture, sculpting on the upper deck. There, you've got the towing cable and a shovel on the back. Um, I do, I do like that. The only downside with that is when you've got lots of them. Everybody's All got this exactly really neatly same. coiled towing cable yeah. and shovel perfectly in the middle of it. But you do get to mix it up with the stowage bins. There's a couple, if you oh, see yeah. these, they're tapered on the back, if you can see, John. Yeah. And that's so that they, they'll they sit in there's little pins or keying points. Just on, on the, the edges. On the, the... on the back of the, yeah. I see that. Back there. I see that. And so when you put those on, and they're not all identical. Like one of them's got an axe on it and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so um, when you build in this kit, the only thing I think you need to bear in mind is there's two hull guns. I think all of the ones in British service use the shorter one. Oh, uh, okay. I think the longer gun is a later one, but by that period, we were getting Shermans. So I think we get all, all the shorter ones. Certainly, I've never seen differentiated stats on British ones. So they're either all long or all short, and the shorter one is earlier. And so remember, when you're building the turrets, the Grant, it will tell you those instructions, it is the larger turret. The, the one in British service, oh. it's got a, yeah, so you, you can build the Grant or the Lee. Okay, that's that's important. So the, the big turret is the British one. Yeah. Right. The bigger turret is the British one. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Um, yeah, skirts fit on nicely. You also get two turret pegs though. So obviously that you would paint them very differently, but you could actually build both versions of this. Well, you've turret. got, yeah, you've got both the... It's not like yeah, yeah. The two two complete two top, turrets. You have two complete turrets. So actually, what I would do with that in this game is I would take that spare turret peg and build the alternative Crusader turret because you have options in Crusaders. Whereas once you painted this British, it ain't going to look anything like it's, an American yeah, one. Just, so you probably is. can't use both turrets unless you're just playing with the bare plastic. So that's going to be your second integral platoon out of this set. You've got your Crusader HQ, your Crusader Platoon, and then you've got these. Right then, onto that support unit. Support unit. This is the M4A1 Sherman Armoured Troops. Says it right there. Oosh. All right, so this, um, even more expensive than... Oh, this is interesting. Um, I've only just seen. The Sherman Armoured Troop with three Shermans is going to cost 27 points. What? It's e it's even more. The grants the were grant. eighteen. Yeah. They're up to twenty seven. Are they that much better? Uh, they are that much better. They've got um similar stats um in terms of them being careful, they're confident and they're trained. But the armor has front armor has gone up from five to six. So at six, you're gonna roll a dice, you get at least a seven. Yeah. So against two pounders, an equivalent ping fifty mil type guns. And below, you probably can't be damaged at all at any range, only in the side. Oh wow! And he, and even with the even with the larger guns, that you want the six pounder here has got an anti tank power of nine with six plus a dice. 
and potentially another one for long range. Three plus. This is an extreme. Two plus. You're yeah. all right. But you, we know about the Shermans from the late war when it's probably not adequate for the job anymore. Mm. But in 1942, 1943, this thing is a beast. They're the dog's dangly bits. They're the dog's dangly bits. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. This particular Sherman kit. Now, before I finish with the unit card, what I hadn't, I hadn't realized I'd not handled this unit card before, is you get a three Shermans for 27 or... Uniquely, you have the option to have two with one grand. Now, with the pieces you have here, you can't do that because you need your three grants for your other to grant that, troop. Yeah. But if you have other models, and that's just going to save you a couple of points, take down to 24 points. Um, if you remember the way that shooting works in Flames of War, you have the option for the mistaken target. You can get them to hit, pile them all off onto, pile them off onto the, the cheaper one or whatever, or some, <laughs> some proportion of that, yeah. And at 27 points for three of them, you couldn't have a lot of these in a force, but the Germans will struggle with this. Mm. The 88 is still going to go straight through it, but pretty much every other weapon is very likely to bounce wow. off. Uh, Sherman yeah. was and cool. The Sprue... It looks like you've got the two engine blocks. Mm. Was yeah. that a thing back then? So the, these are the transmission covers. Yeah, that yeah. one. Um, the British ones are usually in this three-part yeah. Transmission cover, whereas the American ones have got the cast transmission cover. So is that that's the one you'd model for this period, right? You'd model them with the three-part transmission cover. Oh, okay. For, if it's a British one. Okay. Late war, the British could have either, either, but I don't think the Americans ever have this this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even though it's an American tank, but they but you have to remember that we're buying them. So they say, we've got this tank. We say, okay, we like that, but can you make these changes? And they consider them as a business <laughs> proposition. Yeah. So like with the Grant, they made some, they made a lot of the changes that we wanted. With the Sherman, we get pretty much what they get. That's what it is. But this is a very good tank for its era anyway. So no, no worries, no qualms. In fact, Tobruk, as mentioned on there, when Tobruk falls in 1942, Churchill is in America. He's talking to Roosevelt. It's very embarrassing because the Americans are now in the war. Yeah. Because of Japan, he's gone over to see him. To Brook Falls, Roosevelt says, "What can we do?" And Churchill says, "Well, some of those new Sherman tanks yeah, would be great. Be nice. <laughs> they, they, they look good. Can we have some of them?" <laughs> uh, and, and they do. So this is the same sprue you get in the Hit the Beach. There, Sweet. it's the M4A1 yeah. sprue. So. Um, yeah, it's cool. Like 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 all of their modern kits, which is why it's later. Look, this is a uh, oh no, it's also twenty seventeen. Yeah, twenty seventeen. It's the same one, but it's like 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 them. It's a war gamers kit. It's simple. Yeah. There's not lots of pieces here. There's keying the tracks and the running gear all in a single piece. You don't have to put any wheels or tracks on. You get a few custom extra bits and a bit of tarp on there. You know, ammo boxes, fuel cans, things like that. Yep. And so if you look at these desert pieces, your Sherman has got one piece of type of tarp on it. Your Grant has got another type of tarp on it. And the Crusader has got a third type of tarp on so it. So you can mix that up. So all you can mix them up across the... That's one of the areas you're going to get your uh, variety. Um, you've got the skirts on. Most of the pictures I've seen, the desert ones do have the they skirts. They do. So that's worth modeling Most them of on them. if you're playing that. Indeed, especially the American sector with the Bacars, they just got ripped off. It's just like mangling the bocage. Yeah, because these, are, these are not. Yeah, up. these are not armored. You yeah. know what I mean. This is this is just, just a, a bit of sediment, metal yeah. to stop um, to stop muck collecting in certain areas. So they just got ripped off by the environment. Really, um, you can see that in with the like the spaced armor on the German tanks. Mm. See photographs. There's often big tears in it. It's just ripped apart. Because it's not by... arm. It's not really armor. No, it's designed to detonate a warhead at distance, at distance. from. From the tank, so that's the shop. If you're not, but this is one of my favourite kits to build. You like it? Yeah, it's very, very easy to build. Like it a lot. Um, built loads of them, uh, and you'll see some pictures. So many of the pictures you've seen, they're not all painted for desert because it's just the collection that I have. But yeah. if you've got a built one, I'm sure it. Yeah. Oosh. What do you like next? Uh, because that, so that is that is the British. That's all the British force. Yeah. So right, give us some of these there Italians. Some of these there Italians. So you've got the Italian tank. I do have one of them. Whatever which, whatever one it's it is. It's both is it of them, the sir. Yeah. So there's only a few cards in here. The Italian force is telling you to build the M1441 Tank Company. Wow. The M1441 Tank Company is one tank. 
One tank. One uno tank. <laughs> yeah. Now, the Italians, because we've already reviewed the Italian army box, the stats for the Italians in this, I don't mean the stats like the armor and firepower. I mean the stats like the motivation and the remount value yeah. are really high. And, uh, you know, if you read your history, you might be looking at this and thinking, Italian Surely performance not. in World War II was terrible. Said the Italian army's overall performance against a vastly superior equipped foe mm. was not good. At all. But this is part of Rommel's Panzer Group Africa. This is the very best of what they have. The best men in the country. Um, and so the problem with like Bulgaria, Romania, a lot of these places, the problem was never um, a competence of the soldiers or bravery. The problem is the equipment that they have is hopelessly out of just date. No good. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the force that they're up against is just massively superior. Um, and these stats really reflect that. I mean, these stats are, are to die for. This thing, not only is it confident and careful, so hitting a four, um, it's got a remount value of two plus. What? So if you bail it, it's going to get back in. Wow. Um, that's on the HQ, but that same remount value of two plus is on here because they have uh, determined and protected. Now this, this tank is going to remount. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's got a front armor of three, mate. So it may well not be bad. <laughs> it may well just be just, blown up. Yeah, gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've got you've got the model there of this the is, tank. Yeah, this is yeah. that one. Um, so your your tank platoon, your tank company. This is the HQ. It consists of an HQ company of a single tank. Beep. Now, I like single tank HQs in Flames of War, especially when it's a crap tank, because <laughs> you can hide. You can, if you're clever. Yes, you can. You know, because that whole force morale thing mm. about formations, this is a unit that does not need to engage anybody because no. it isn't going to do anything. No. So, um, yeah. Uh, so it's going to have one HQ of one tank and then two to three tank platoons, which are either M1441s or Semaventes, which we'll come to in a moment. It's also got heat ammunition, so even though this gun has only got a firepower of anti-tank power of six... A diddy gun, man. It's only got an anti-tank power of six. It doesn't lose any at range. Sweet. So on the Crusaders, you're fine. Crusaders front armor three can do that. 50-50. Yeah. yeah. That's a fine chance. Sherman, six. <laughs> Grand, five. No. Can't do it. But this is two points. Two points. Duh. Wow. <laughs> Duh. And the tank itself, the Semvent Tank Company, comes in uh, packs of three, four, or five. You're going to make fun. Are you going to make four of them in here? You're going to make one for your HQ yeah. and another four in here, which again is only nine points. Um, and it's got very similar stats to the HQ. In fact, it may have identical stats. It does. Sometimes the leaders are a little bit better. Yeah, sometimes. But the motivation stuff on these is already really good. Um, this is a medium tank to the Italians. Well, it looks like a light tank to me. It's only 14 tons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you compare that to a full-sized uh, Sherman tank, it, there's no comparison. Yeah. So the reason the Italian vehicles... And again, a lot of the other Axis miners. Um, a lot of it is to do with welding. So you can see that tank, you can see the rivet. This is, is riveted is stamped, to, stamped for rivets. to hell. One of the problems is that um, welding, being able to weld rolled steel is a new process. And a lot of people can't do it. I don't know why the Germans couldn't train them to do it or didn't train them to do it. Didn't give them the technology. Hmm. But there's, there's serious limits on what you can do with that. Not only is it riveted to a frame. It's obviously very time consuming. Yeah. And riveting is an extremely skilled job. Yeah. And this is one of those strange things. Like both, what, welding yeah. requires less skill than riveting, but you need to have the, in, the, the right kind of industrial equipment to do this type of welding. So the Americans were able to cast and weld their tanks, mm -hmm. which made them cheap and quick. So riveting, it's not, that, it's not that one guy with a hammer, hammering in a rivet is a difficult or complex task. It's getting two guys to be able to hammer alternately yeah, yeah. as a rivet. Yeah. That requires a lot of practice. Yeah. And they're big hammers the at great speed. And if you've ever seen like the, the shipbuilding stuff, 
so there's a great there's a great black and white video from um, from I think uh, Barrow and Furnace, and there's um, there's people on the deck of the ship that's being built yeah. with a brazier with the rivets heating up, and they toss the rivet to somebody across the deck who then picks it up and tosses it down to the, the side to the next guy where somebody else puts it in place and then two guys start riveting yeah. it. And wow. This is five people involved in putting in one rivet. Single rivet. Single rivet, yeah. That's a massively time-consuming process. Yes, yes. But labour was much cheaper in the past. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I um, so. so these tanks are riveted. But the other point is about engine power, isn't it? Is the is the, the real the real performance limiter on a tank? The better the engine, mm. the, the, the can, more armor you, you can. You can either be faster, things. or you can have more armor, one or, the other. or a bigger gun. You know, and one of the things that kind of technology has shown is that bigger nations have got more brains to choose from. There's the, you I know, mean, the, it's the bigger nations that are able to develop. But a lot, greatly down to a population size, yeah. more than anything else, is provided there's an adequate background technology. Um, and Italy just didn't seem to get the help it might have needed from Germany. If this tank had come into service two years before, it would be great. Boo, but it didn't. <laughs> but it didn't. Um, but in flames of war, now not in terms of battling with this set, I don't think, but in terms of playing the game for points. Oh, yeah. You do, yeah. These things, you get a lot of these things. Swarm yeah. tactics. Again. But it's not M14, it's medium tank in yeah. the, by their definition. But it's only like 13, 14 tons or something it's like that. It's really not, really not that big. Um, you'd think it was a light tank. But terrain dash is only 12 inches. It's not great. However, same sprue yes. builds another model. Let's take a look at the sprue. So here's the sprue, John. Yeah, man. What do you reckon? Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. I thought... I was when you handed this to me I thought well where's the other tank but no it all completely fits onto this yes. which is fantastic yeah um, yeah we've seen the little M14 lovely what a beautiful tank here's one we built earlier here's one you built earlier but you can also make the Semavente Semavente we try not to do Italian accents but no <laughs> have to try yeah um, this looks like it could do stuff man mmm an assault gun yeah it's got the vibes of the Stugga Stugs and all that. So you can see from the sprue, the, the tracks... Uh, how and how the does it work? They're, they're keyed into the lower hull, which again has got different keying points on each side. And that's really useful with that's this one. really helpful. Because there's a big slope to the yeah, tracks. Yeah, you don't want to get You don't put these on the wrong way around. <laughs> um, and then you have this interesting upper hull Yeah, what's pace. that all about? Well, that's because it's the same, the same model is building two different tanks. So on the other side, you've got. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah? Just looking at the real thing. So, so the, so the rear the... and the front are the same. Yes. And then you have, you make a choice of these two pieces. Which yeah. clips onto that mid -section. Yeah, so if you see the other, the other end yeah. of it, these. those two pieces. Now it's pretty obvious which is which. One has got a hole for a turret peg, and the other does not. It's got a hole in the front for a gun. So you're building a self propelled gun. Or the tank. That's clever. You can, because I've, I've done this now, you can if, you know, if it's um, if it's a big deal for you. Can you do it? You can have those two pieces separate. Yeah. Pop out the mid section. And pop out the middle and, and, and entirely alternate them. What I would say was there was a slight, there was a slight gap at the front for me. Yeah. So I needed to push... I needed to push it forwards when I glued it because mm -hmm. it's co it's covered at the back from the way it sets into this this low the, hole this, piece. This rear section, yeah. you get so a shielded yeah, there. You're talking like a gap of half a millimetre, but there was a noticeable half a millimetre. So as I glued it, I held it forwards <laughs> so that that half a millimetre is concealed. Um, that may have been just a particular one that I built there, but I don't think so. But you could, and it does even have little teeth in the underneath of it here, where it where it holds in. Okay. So it, did, it wasn't like it was rattling around or falling off or anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I know I know some people do that. You don't yeah, have to mess around the most with out the... getting the most out of the kit. You don't have to mess around with complex um, magnet situation. But it, it is imperfect. I just want to just yeah, sort of say that. Just put that out. But there. you'll see that as you're building it, and you can make that choice. Um, but it's obviously going to be painted the same. Uh, your, also, your hatches was an interesting design piece. So the open hatch, John, can you see the open hatch I'm on here? I'm scanning. 
Is that it in the middle there? It's between the two machine guns. That is a weird hatch, man. Because it's the hatch opens like this. Yeah. And to make it easier to model, it. the lo the lower part of it, you just glue it. So they just made the hole in the turret deeper and keyed oh. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the piece so you makes just more sense. so if you, you look at the down. model, I've made it with the open hatch. Yes. You can sort of see it. Yeah. Yeah, but it the just, piece looks. I was looking at that piece and thinking, "What is that, this? How does that go in?" That it's like a gun right. shield, or I, a... yeah, it does because it's keyed. Yeah, it's got a little hole in it um, for where it fits in. But yeah, that's nice. They've also given you both machine, a pair of machine guns on here. I like the fact they do that because sometimes they're very small pieces for the scale. They might ping. break, or they might ping off ping into off. nowhere. But also in terms of the stowage on here, again, you've got a very different tarp piece of tarp cans. you've got the jerry cans in a row which i've not seen on another model either mm. so that's nice um spare links and then spare links for it's a very different track system yeah nice yeah. it's well, one nice final one. piece that i've noticed and i can see it on the the, the m14 the mm. the machine gun it's got two two barrels what's Oh, the the whole mounted yeah, machine. Yeah, the whole gun. mounted. The slide, yeah, the whole mounted machine gun is a pet. Now, I wonder then. Ah, it, it's well pointed out, John, because I noticed that when I built the model, is but I didn't thing? think to to check the stat cards. The M14 has got um, a moving and halted machine gun rate of fire of six dice Ooh. to account for the larger number of machine guns. Meaty. Um, so that is gonna mow down infantry in the open on a two point tank. That's worth having, right? I, I think, think it's worth having for the machine guns. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. I hadn't thought about that. So the Semivente is the self-propelled gun. Um, this oh. is... It's not a Stug, it's a Stu. It's a yeah. howitzer tank. It was intended as self-propelled artillery and not even necessarily as direct fire artillery, as self-propelled artillery. That can elevate that gun a little bit. Um, but, of course, it is a 75 mil gun with a heat shell. Which is a lot bigger than the 47 mil gun <laughs> on your tank <laughs> with the heat shell. And actually what they found during 42 and 43 when this, this is introduced very late for Italy, is this was their best tank That's ever. the one you want. That's let's, the one you let's need. Let's make more of these. Yeah, let's make more of these. So it's only got a direct fire of 8 and, um, and a range of 20. Um, um, I don't know whether the low ranges of artillery and direct fire is to reflect range finding equipment or just training. It's not really what they're yeah, intended to yeah. do, but you do see that quite a bit. Um, but obviously the difference between eight and six is quite significant when you start shooting at things with six armor. Because this one can't penetrate at any range. This one can. That's a chance. And again, it's a heat round, so it'll do it at any range. It is forward firing on that limitation, and it doesn't have all the machine guns. Its front armor is improved mm. to four. Okay. Four's not great, but again, if the other guy's shooting you with sixes and sevens, it's, it's just that little bit better. But you do pay a lot more points for these. How much? Considering that these were like two, two and a half points, yeah. depending on how many you get. These are four points each. So, um, again, I say that almost with a pinch of salt. Flames of War gives you a... It's, gr it's, diff it's, it's not exactly four points each. It is mostly four points each. But it comes in batteries of two to six. Okay. So, you've got in here... Um, a four, if you build all six, which you could, be 24 points. Which brings us to, at this point, you get 10 Italian vehicles and 12 Allied vehicles... There's a big advantage on the Allied side at the moment in terms of uh, points spent. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Because we've got another sprue. Another sprue! We've Let's not forget sprue. the things. Oh. The other sprue. Oh. 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 The 88 millimeter. Oh, it's a beast. Oh, it's a Germans call it the 8.8 .8 centimeter, yes. actually. Yes, true. Um, so these come, you can take even just a single one of these. That is one, two, three, or four. And they're six points each. But this gun, careful, means it, it's hit on fours. So only got a four up save. One of the things I've come to realize, I didn't always notice this, is the, the artillery that comes on bigger bases has weaker saves. Oh. 
And I think we played that wrong in a few games. I think we oh. assumed that he had the most of them on three up saves. Standard. I yeah. think this size artillery base has a four up. But oh. I need to look into that more. Yeah. But, yeah. but check that. So one, two, three, four. It says you get two of these in this box. Now, this has got a holy rate of fire of two and an anti tank power of 14. That goes straight through everything in the box. Boom! At any range. Like the whole box. It goes <laughs> through the box. through everything in the box in one line. Go on. Yeah. Uh, it's got a it's got a Just large a, gun, which means you can't really move it very well. Bigger um, than the you, tank. Yeah, um, and it's got the self defense A rule, but you can terrain dash it two inches if you want to move. <laughs> Whoop! Yeah, cross <laughs> yeah, country dash is literally easy. open four inches. Wow! Um, but with a forty inch range and a rate, rate of fire or two. This thing can pick its target from the other side of yep, the table. Quite happily. If it hits, it's probably going to kill it. Wow. Now, that's only 12 points. That's still, I think, the Italians are going to be, be quite a bit less. You can look at that in a minute. Because those Shermans and Grants were really quite expensive. But interestingly, your uh, mileage may vary. We've got four of these in this box. Oh. Not two. Four. Now, I don't think we're supposed to. I need a tank gun battery of two, yeah. Well, it's it's written on there. You meant to get two of it's these. Get two of them, except we got four. And we got four right down to the cruise pros, I think. Is that a, like, bases. Is that a misprint? Was it, is that is that the shortfall in points that we think we have? Well, I mean, the thing was cracking value with two guns. What, with four? Um, yeah. So, what the purpose of this set, then? There's, sorry. We talked about all the sprues. Mostly. Yes, we have. We've yeah. shown you some pictures. Yep. I already have some of these in my collection, uh, so I was able to show you them. Um, with these start sets and, and, and the last few bits you get in there to talk, to talk about, we've got um, the crew and so forth, ah. wonderful, which I'll show you. So this is their new um, their newish process, their Sciocast. That's, yeah, I was about to ask you, what, what's it called again? It's called it's called Sciocast. Yes. Um, right. Which is like which is like a thermoplastic, um, you know. The, a, a lot of people were a little bit disappointed with this in the early days. I keep really? saying this, yeah. You know, it, it's got a chalky texture. It does. It, it looks like it's got an uneven surface, but this looks crisp. And, and some of the early examples were not great. Having seen this process at Warlord and spoken to the guys about it, it's a hundred percent a quality control problem. I, I That's think. That's what it was. Right. I think so because I look at these models and they're beautiful. These ones look all right. The ones I've got here, this artillery, and I'm not. I'm not just gassing about this. These are lovely sculpts. Yeah, man. They're yeah, really, this is crisp. really crisp and clean. Looking at the folds on the, you know, on a fifteen mil miniature. Looking at the fingers and the hand of the guy who sat I, down. I feel like some of them had really soft detail. The early Seacar stuff was like But they really... were the same sculpts going into the process. Yes. But, but what was coming out wasn't as good. Hmm. And I think it's it's a learning curve thing. And I think from the Warlords, uh, from it's Battlefront's front, yeah. plastic, uh, factory perspective, it's quality control. Is that they, they shouldn't have let some of this stuff out because it wasn't really up to it. Well, um, and, and having seen seen the process, they, they, they have a few. They, so when they, they make they make their molds, they put it in, and then they have to work out a variety of different settings on the machine. It's not like yeah, all yeah, this cooling stuff. time, all of this stuff. Perhaps I've nailed it now. And it's it's not even different for just for different models. The way they they basically lay it out in a butter dish <laughs> or whatever, it's different for each mold. Yeah, it's specific it, to the mold, not the miniature. Mold, yeah, it's the so mold. So you can buy this set. You know, they can do mould A of this. The ones on the left-hand side might be a bit iffy. Mm. But the ones on the right are really good. And then mould B, they're all fine. Mm. You know, as much as they're identical, then they're, they're not identical um, from that side. But when they get it right... Well, this this is the right one. This, this is right, this yeah. Is crisp. I think so. Um, so, yeah, they've even given us all four artillery crew. And they've also given us uh, two sprues of tank commanders. The other thing you get with this is the, the models are sometimes they've come off. Yeah, but they're there. Why do I care about that? They're there. <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're good. not. They're not snapped in a way that matters. Yeah, they've only come off of the. They've only come off of the off of the, the sprue. Yeah. Um, so the six Italian tank commanders and they're unique sculpts. Each of these six guys is a little bit different. Yep. We've got one with a map. 
you got some with the sort of like dust caps and Googles. They've all got Googles. Of course they've got Googles. There's one with the moustache. You can, <laughs> like, the that's the, the quality. You can see? There's a dude right. here with his hand up and he's like, yep, got me a moustache. You also get this two nice. of the of the hard plastic. So for, for the major nations, they've got these hard plastic sprues. Yeah. I do, I do like these. The British ones are nice because you've got the tankers berry, haven't they? They're nice. And the, nice. I found the two... There's two that are just tiny little busts of oh, dudes. Right. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're tiny, down. tiny, sunken. I think they actually look quite good because you just see like an eyes and berry popping yeah. out over the top. <laughs> Rather than some of the like, oh, let's go get them sort of chaps. Yeah. You've got that guy as well. You're going to get shot, there. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm peeking. I'm not looking. I'm peeking because yeah. this is dangerous, right? That's um, good. And the last thing is... Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie right there. It says it? here you get eight million bayonet dice. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the dice in the in the appropriate desert colours or the desert colours that Flames of War have assigned to them. Yeah. So the British desert dice are these red spots for the desert rats on this uh, sandy colour, and the Italians have got this black on an, an alternative sandy colour. You also get one uno eight million bayonet dice. What is that? What, what? I don't understand. Tell me. Mechanically, mechanically, on all of these stat cards for the Italians, you have two sets of stats. This is like their training, motivation, remount stuff. At the beginning of the game, you point to a unit, you roll the 8 million bayonets dice, and if the 8 million bayonets symbol comes up, you use the elite stats. So this is to reflect the really uneven quality of the Italian army. That's different. Yeah, but they're all really high quality anyway. Pretty solid, yeah. Yeah. The thing about this is you don't have any control. It's not like, yeah, I'm going to have my Semivente. It's going to be my They're going to be the meat. Yeah. Um, it would be nice to have more of these so, can... so that when you have rolled it, it could follow the unit around yeah. for the game. How do you keep um, track of that, man? Um, what, with more bayonets? But there's, there's, there's one in three, effectively. There's two painted sides. And the, the symbol, if you can't tell, it's the Italian fascist symbol of the bushel with the axe in it. I've never seen that. Can I have a look? Look! Oosh. It's a thing. The 8 million bayonets thing, though, this is something that Mussolini said in one of his speeches. Oh. That Italy now had an army this is the of 8 million bayonets. Oh, genius. Not against the tank, though, mate. Yeah. Yeah. But he was, he was trying to make that sort of... You know, it, what you have to remember about the, the Axis power, certainly... Or certainly the fascist powers in, 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 in nationalist Spain, in Italy, in Nazi Germany. These are revolutionary governments. Right. They're very they're very big on proclamations and grand statements, but also this kind of idea of a of a mobilized nation. Mm. So in Mussolini saying that he had an you know he had a nation in arms of eight million bayonets. On some level, is romanticising the idea that you cannot possibly overcome this, despite the fact the Italians were getting hammered yeah. everywhere they fought. Hmm. But but it but it but it it kind of um, you know uh, symbolises that revolutionary feel of the cause. I think the problem with that was in Italy is. Mussolini was the leader of a government which had been revolutionary, but it had been revolutionary quite a while ago. Right, so not so much now. Not not so much now, and the Italian people weren't that interested in the not things. Not that infused, that, been there. Not when it wasn't it was going like, very well. You know, yeah. they, were, they, weren't, they didn't find that deep well of resilience that the Japanese and the Germans found. Mm. Um, but probably for them, it was never their war. It was someone else's war that they joined. It wasn't an existential war for them in the way. It was for Mussolini, right, but yeah. it wasn't. But they don't think the Italians ever believed that if we lose to the British and Americans, they will powder us all into dust and burn our children in the way that I think that propaganda had been effective in Russia, in Germany, yeah. in Japan. These people like, if we lose to we, these people, they'll murder our that. children. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was up a storm, didn't it? Yeah, that yeah. gets everyone motivated. That yeah, was the, the Italians joined the war of their own free will, not the Italian people. Well, yeah, but in Duce, Mussol yeah. Mussolini, Dude, but, um, specifically, he joins the war in 1940 when, when the Germans invade France. It's like I need ten thousand dead to appear at the peace conference. He wanted skin in the game. 
Because he thought the Germans were going to win the war, and I want something out of it. Oh, wow. That was the thinking. Anyway, look, what would you reckon as a starter set then, John? Um, as a starter set, again, once again, you get a hell of a lot of plastic in there. Uh, you even get extra plastic. I'd be interested to see if that's a typo on the box or if it's just a mispack. Um, I think it's a mispack. We think it's a mispack. Woo! Winner's win yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this I don't know what 10 boxes to find that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try it. Is this, is this good to start off? Um, I don't know. It's an interesting one. So one of the criticisms you often get of Flames of War boxes, uh, in Chris, the modern ones, is, you know, where's the infantry? And I'd say in terms of a starter, learn to play the game, stay you away from infantry. infantry. No, no. no. <laughs> Uh, and as long as you haven't got infantry, you don't need to worry too much about artillery either. Because yeah. it's only any good at firing infantry. Yeah. As long as you keep the game focused on tanks... Then it's all right. Yeah. But also in this, they have got anti-tank guns. Oof. So you are beginning to get... You're getting the openings that, yeah. of... This is a little bit like how infantry work. Some of the mechanics. Yeah. But as soon as you stick two platoons of infantry down on your side of the it's game... It's a different game. You, ju you just change the time scale of that game significantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. You play Flames of War, you definitely need to do that. You need... You need but if you're yeah, learning infantry, to play Flames of War... It's not good. No. So in that respect, great. And I think... So... I like the, the fact that there's so much variety. I think the Italian one is really good because you've seen two very different vehicles between yeah. the 1441 and the Semiventes. I can have a lot of crap tanks or I can have a reasonable number of decent tanks. Yes. Yeah. You know, as you, as you play, you, yeah, you build it, you play it out of the box, fine. But soon you're going to start totaling up the points and going, I don't know, British, you've got quite a few a more minute, extra points yeah. in here. Want to play a more balanced game? The Italian army I like... The, the British force, I'm not so keen on. What, what is it about the British force that makes you... There's too much different stuff. There is... Yeah. As, okay, a, bu as yeah. a buyer, as a, you know, the model of the collector in me is great because, frankly, if you want to play early, um, a mid-war desert British and Italians, you probably want two of these boxes. To pad it out proper. Which is good to, to bring you up to full strength, because you're going to need at least 20 of these yeah, Italian yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, and you don't want to be buying these in platoon. This is 42 quid for 10 of them, or 35 quid for 5. I mean, mm, let me think. That's a no-brainer right there. So that's, you know, as you, as, you, as you get your second box or whatever, and you're going, well, I'm going to use this Grant Sherman mixed combination. But I think there's, there's a lot of different vehicles to keep track of in your head and they're all yeah. different yeah why they couldn't just give you six grants just keep it as the grants and the the crusaders like or even even the three different types of crusader or just for a have that. rookie yeah is not yeah well i think but what i think that they've done is made a really appetizing starter box yeah if their objective is to sell the box, I think Which they've made think the right is. choice. Yeah, yeah. If their objective is to give you a good first game, I think it would be better if it were all Crusaders. Right. Okay. You make the difference. I hear that, yeah. But saying that, you wouldn't need the flat guns you, if we didn't have the heavier True. tanks. But the, the number of tank var variants on the British side is a bit of a bit of a brain damager. Especially if three nearly identical ones with different stats. Still. For forty-two pounds or however oh, much you say, you get all that plastic. Can't go wrong with you it. You can trade with your buddy. Get your buddy to buy one. Have a trade with him. Oosh. Yeah, do it. Do it that way. Of course, you can buy it from us as Preferably, well, yes. as you well know. So yeah, as a start, as a start set, pretty good. I, I mean, you can't argue with the value of it. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a bad game. If we play one of these starter armies, I think it will be this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we haven't had the Italians we in have the desert. Not. The British army is already done. Yeah. Yeah, so it really is just a question of painting a lot of these. That makes it... But I could batch that. Yes. Maybe. Not batch it. <laughs> not not, not batch joking it. batch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, though. <laughs> yeah. Now that you know, I'm like thinking ahead, thinking ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think great value. Decent introduction to the game. 8 out of 10 from me. Cracking. That's it, folks. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.
Thank you.